Hey everybody, happy Memorial Day. Hope you are all having a great day and uh, getting ready for barbecue. Some of you on the East Coast, by the time it is here, you're probably already barbecuing. But uh, anyway, uh, we are glad to be here today. I'm Dennis Gebhardt with Guru Nation. And this is my teaching partner, partner Max Massiano. Max, how you doing, hey brother? Peace. I am great. How are you, Dennis? Well, I'm good. I'm just enjoying the day and, uh, you know, getting some uh, work done, getting prepped for our class next week. Her Elder School starts Same. on June the 5th, and I really am so excited about that. I'm, I'm more Got excited it. about that than I've been in a long time because it seems like every session, it gets a little bit more in-depth, gets a little bit more detailed, allows us to incorporate some new skills, some new learning tools. So it's all good, man. It's all good. Yeah. I'm all about yeah. I'm all about learning. I believe truly that uh, you know learning is the key to success in this industry, and um, you got to get out there and you got to load up the brain, right. you know, and the so constant we, uh, willingness to continue yeah. to learn too, you know, and right. always always try to better your best. Right, and you know, here's the thing: the psychologists say that you know, we, we don't retain everything we hear just one time. Right. You know, it kind of, some goes, some sticks with us, some doesn't because, you know, we drift in and out, you know, being engaged, uh, you know, depending on the educator, sometimes if they're monotone, we'll, we'll kind of drift away. We'll take a Bahama vacation for a couple seconds and then we'll come back. Or we'll think, right. ah, I wonder what I want for lunch today. Or, oh, man, these shoes are really hurting my feet. You know, we do that in and out. And so that's why I've always said repetition is the mother of learning. That's you know, right. so, so for me, the more exposure you get, even if it's the sa to the same information, the better your retention will be. But some of us have a hard time because we don't want to think that that's the way we are. We, we don't want to embrace our human flaw. <laughs> That's right. So we go, no, man, I only need to see it once and I'm good to go. <laughs> well, and then there's also like, what what I would sort of consider, we our, our learning process also evolves, right? The longer we study a subject. So, right. so maybe something that was taught to us one way in school, you know, which was effective in that moment when you, you know, you're, your beauty school teacher was trying to convey a concept and, and transfer it. But then as you increase your knowledge base, you, you learn that sometimes things aren't just that simple. Exactly. And there's, and there's more to it. There's a bit more moving parts and pieces, if you will, right? Exactly. And I think as you progress in your career, hopefully you have the epiphanies that help you realize, hey, you know, there's more right. to this than I thought there was. Exactly. I mean, because, you know, if you think about in hair color, for example, I mean, most of us learned basic hair color combinations in grade three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, in fact, the fact that you're even bringing this up uh, makes me think of, you know, I have a I have a really longtime industry colleague who you also know, Dennis, and we we respect this person very much. And they had sent me just a post off of Instagram of someone doing kind of like a little color theory demonstration using paint and just talking about how great it was. And we should do this in a class sometime. And Although, yes, we've all seen it. Paint, um, food coloring, Play-Doh, a myriad of, of different ways to demonstrate color theory and mixing hair color. But in my mind, you know, I, I was a little bit like, yeah, that's great for, for entry beauty school, but uh, like, Hairdressers need to know that these are actually, this is, these are chemicals. So right. mixing them together isn't just as simple as mixing blue, red, and yellow. In fact, we teach in our classes, 
if you mix too many things together, you just make mud. You do. And it's happened to all of us at least once where we've done the everything but the kitchen sink formula. Yeah, if you think about it, this is what most of us started off with, right? Mm -hmm. These guys? Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember crayons in your coloring book? And, and I... it would be it would be probably mm -hmm. wonderful if that's how simple hair color was. You know, I mean, that's why I say, you know, your first color class you ever attended was in grade three. I, I mean, I, and then when I see adults learning color now, learning color theory, and we're using a tool from grade three, that's not really even relevant to what we're actually doing. I can see where sometimes I just don't believe that that really transfers successfully. And you can do things with paint and crayons that you can't do with hair color because here's the thing, you know, I, like I said, I say, imagine that you have a crayon, but you can't even see the color in your crayon for 35 minutes after you write on the paper with it. You have to wait right. for 35 minutes. <laughs> it's like the, remember Invisible Ink? It's like the yes. reverse of Invisible Ink. <laughs> and then you have to understand that my crayon is not just burgundy. My crayon is burgundy and brown. And the, there, there's different ratios based upon which crayon I get. I mean, you can see how now my crayons become freaking complicated, man. Heck but yeah. that's really what hair color is. And it's like you said, too many crayons. Well, you, you see that happening in crayons too. And yeah. in fact, if you mix all the colors of crayons together, you get like a, a brown black thing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny? It's the yeah. same thing in hair color as far as that goes. Too many yeah. colors in a recipe. And it goes, well, it all, everything becomes achromatic. That's the technical term for it, sure. which means it has no tone because right. it, it doesn't know what it is, doesn't know what yeah. color it is at all. So I, I think that's why it's so important to understand. I mean, understanding the color wheel is important. And if you want to teach it with crayons or paint or whatever you want to use, that's fine so long as you say to the learner, this is simply a tool to help you understand the tone combinations. Right. It has nothing to do with how hair color actually works. Exactly. And again, you guys, we're not knocking this method of teaching. No. What we're saying is this is a great, get your foot in the door, explain the concept. But right. then, you know, as, as your students are progressing, you can also give them more information and actually move from this piece into the actual chemistry piece. Right. Which when, I, you, act, when you have a great grasp of that, as, as a student, you know, it really changes the way you color hair also. And also now that, I'm off on this, down this rabbit trail. <laughs> in your crayon box, if you have a blue crayon, you only have one shade of blue. There are multitudes of different shades, levels of blue. There's dark blue. Dark blue is not light blue on light blue on light blue. Dark blue is a different color. Mm -hmm. It's like people misconstrue purple and violet all the time. And I always say, pick up your box of crayons. In fact, I think there's a purple crayon right there between the green one and the orange one. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? Yeah. That's not violet. Can you see the red in that purple? Yeah. 
It's purple. Yes. Purple it's has like, more red. <laughs> yeah, it's like a violet it's is blue dominant. Yes. Right. Yes. So <clears throat> that's why I say we try to paint it with a broad brush. Yeah. You know, and and that makes it a challenge. It's okay if you wish to do this, but you have to explain more about it Absolutely. to the learner or else the learner gets stuck in this and they don't know why they can't formulate hair color. Right, right. You know, it's like- Absolutely. You know, I mixed gold. Okay, so did you mix gold or what else? What was in the gold? Well, what do you mean? Well, was it just gold or was it red gold? Right. Or was it yellow gold? That's, that's the whole thing too, because a lot of times those, sort of, you know, we, we do this thing in our industry, especially with hair color, where we give something what is called a cosmetic name. Yes. So if you take five different lines of hair color and you, you take, you know, most hair color lines have a gold series, right? So you take five, five different gold, all in a level six, all from six different brands. You're going to have five fairly completely different colors. Most likely. Some gold, some companies' gold are a greenish gold. Mm -hmm. Some gold are a yellow orange. Mm -hmm. Some gold are considered a yellow. So mm -hmm. these, these cosmetic names, which are looked at as <coughs> descriptors, can also be misleading if you don't really know what's in your tube. Exactly. And I know... Every time we do one of these, I get on my soapbox and I talk about die out. Amen. But if I can tell you one. If you can tell me to do one thing and you're not frozen. <laughs> oh, well, folks, Max is on hold right now. So, Max, I'm sure you'll come back here shortly. I hope he comes back here shortly. Well, how was that edit? Boy, that was strange, yeah? Yeah, well, we're still I lost here. Max. I lost Max, and then we brought him back, and so uh, we had a little hiccup, a little hiccup, a little hiccup. Te <laughs> technical difficulties. <laughs> Dennis, you were frozen for me, and I kept talking, and then I realized really? you were frozen, wow. then I was frozen, then everybody well, was may frozen. Maybe I'll have some extra editing work I'll have to do once I see this back. Ah. But anyway, yes, I think that um, yeah, there's nothing wrong, you know. You know, I don't want to say that something is a wrong way to teach, because God knows I've made a lot of mistakes myself. But I think what we have to ask ourselves is: is this the most effective way to teach? I agree. I totally agree. Uh, you know, because, you know, I can use colors and paints. I think that's a great interactive exercise. I think it's great to get everybody playing with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny how when we do that, you know, uh, we're interactive, you know, our kind of our walls drop down and we're more receptive to information. But I think somewhere in that program, you have to kind of insert like, this is fun. This gives you kind of an idea, but it's not it's not how hair color works. Right. And then move uh, them into doing something like dye outs and things like that. I absolutely agree. Like I love using food color to teach neutralization, for mm -hmm. instance. You know, just because it's it's instantaneous. There are other, also things like, you know, like when when you're talking food color is great when you're talking about like the saturation of a shade, how saturated with chroma it is you know right also great because you can you can dump and pour and you can add some brown and you can brown something out you can make something more vibrant all that's great but at the end of the day 
we're still working with tubes of hair color. Right. And I have never taken a tube of blue, a tube of red, and a tube of yellow to make my 6N. I've grabbed a tube of 6N and put it on my client's gray hair with 20 volume. Right. And then, which is fine, you know, I thought for the longest time there were little L's that put blue molecules, red molecules, and yellow molecules into my tube of 6M until I really learned what was in my tube of 6M, mm. which was different than what was in the tube of 7M and what was in the tube of 5M. Indeed. Which also explained to me whenever I was out of 6M and I mixed 5M and 7M, I never quite got the same color. Right. But I always thought that that N series in that color line that I worked with was always this ratio yeah. of blue to this ratio of red to this ratio of yellow. And it was the same. And the reality is, you guys, it's not. It's not. And again, these are great fundamental sort of foot in the door teaching exercises for you guys as trainers, you know, whether it's to your students, to your associates in the salon or to other hairdressers, they're great, they work. But, you know, there's, there's always that evolution where you wanna build. So you go, okay, now you have a good grasp of, of it this way. Now I'm gonna teach you right. some more. Right. And now here's how this relates to that, but this is, you know, more accurate. Exactly. Exactly. And I think if we if we do that, and even as a learner, if you ask yourself, you know, have I had more than just crayons and paint? You know, if you've not, I would venture to say you probably there's there's a lot more that would really surprise you and help you really have more control when you formulate your hair color. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's really what it's about. It's like having the most control over your formula. Right. So, so wouldn't you want to know that that seven ash you pick off the shape, the, the shelf, wouldn't you want to know what it looked like? No, wouldn't you want to know you, if, if before it's you put ash. it on the hair? Yeah. Wouldn't you want to know if it's even ash at all? That's the thing. Because, you know, again, a, a manufacturer's swatch chart isn't necessarily always accurate. No, no, it's made of plastic. They're all made of plastic. Right. They can be a, a close representation, but mm -hmm. I've worked with some companies where I've done dye out and they don't look anything like what's in the shade chart. No, just because so, the marketing department picked the shade chart. <laughs> right. Well, because what, what most people don't know is that there's only a few places where those things are made and Absolutely. you can buy them you can buy them pre-done. Yes. You know? So, but again, you guys, you know, know what you're working with. And right. Do your die out. You bet. You bet. So, yeah, I think that uh, we pretty much exasperated this subject. If you yeah. want to know more, come see us. Come play in our sandbox. Please. One of the things uh, that we do not do is we don't do crayons and paint. I'm sorry. We don't do that. <laughs> but we do use regular color. You do have homework to do where you actually work with regular hair color. So you learn how to read your hair color and have nothing right. to do with the crayons. And, and we, we, may not, we may not have crayons, but we have pH meters. We, we have... Net we have nitrazine strips. We do. We have, you know, we have acidic rinses. We have swatches. We try to make what we teach as relevant, salon friendly and real world as possible while still giving you right. as much information as you can handle. And if you want to feed your heart and your pocket, you got to come take a class with us. If you're hungry to learn and you really want to, you know, do a deep dive and not everybody does and that's okay that's too. But if you want to do a deep dive into hair structure, 
the actual chemistry of the hair itself, hair color chemistry, categories of hair color, formulation, refine formulation. You need to take a class. Yeah, because absolutely. And the best class for you to take, the best class for you to take currently in our program is Hair Color School. That's right. Hair Color School is a month long program where we take a deep dive every week. You have homework total, to complete every week. Total immersion into all right. things hair color. Right. Uh, we also have other programs that we call our Small Bite Education. Mm -hmm. um, some people, you know, they don't want a lot and they don't want a big serving. They yeah. want a small serving that they can digest and then come back for more. And so you can find those small bite programs also on our website. So come and visit our website, which is www.gurunation.net or the easiest way for you to get there. If you have an IG account is find uh, me on IG or Max. Max is at Max M Hair. I am at Real Captain Color. And click on our links, which will take you directly to our educational portfolio. And you can look through the programs that we have to offer. Um, one of the things that uh, I'll guarantee you this, I mean, well, we can't guarantee you we'll make you an expert colorist. We can't even guarantee you we'll make you a good colorist. But we can guarantee you that we will give you the tools that will allow you to create your own pathway to success in hair color. Yeah. And that's a promise that we can, that's a promise we can fulfill. So hopefully you've enjoyed our little chat here. It's been very uh, interesting. Max, good to talk to you today, my friend. And uh, Always. you enjoy your evening. And if you got a few nuggets, tell your friends. And, Please, uh, everybody. Come and, come and see us when you can. Also, you're watching this on our YouTube channel. Please subscribe down below. You'll get a notification. That little bell will ring every time that we drop a new video on our YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, just let us know. Send us comments. Uh, we appreciate anything. We want to know if we're on track for you. We want to know if there's something that we can do to make it easier for you to understand. Um, our goal is to help you discover your own genius, which is inside each and every one of you. So, until we see you again, my name is Captain Color. I am out. Max, how about you? I'm out of here. You guys right, have a great holiday. Have a great holiday. Have a great week. We'll see you all.